Personally, I'm not much of a sports anime fan, but having completed the first two seasons of Kuroko no Basket, I can safely say that this show is probably the most fun I've had watching anime in terms of how exciting it is to watch. Today I'll delve into the aspects about what makes Kuroko no Basket so captivating to watch. Hopefully by the end of this, I'll either give you an incentive to check out Kuroko or further cement your understanding. Since I do intend to have this spoiler free, I'll give a brief synopsis. The premise centers around a group of six basketball prodigies from Teiko Middle School who are unbeatable and became known as the Generation of Miracles. As they graduated from middle school, each of them separated to different high schools where they will later face off in national tournaments. The story follows one of the members, Kuroko Tetsuya, who joins a rather average high school basketball team along with Kagami Taiga, who's got a strong passion for the sport. With the help of one another, they both vowed to beat each of the members in the Generation of Miracles. Now what's great about the direction of this series is how intense and ridiculous the basketball matches are. Kuroko no Basket takes the naturally fast-paced game of basketball and amplifies it tenfold. You can feel the adrenaline pumping action radiating from each character as they take every game they play so seriously. Combined with the high stake matches and the back and forth rivalry between players, this series really mimics what it's like to be in a competitive game. If you've ever been in a competition or just wanted your team to win, it's the feeling of the immense amount of pressure placed on winning. It's a rush of emotion, you're afraid of losing, you're scared of disappointment, but at the same time you're so desperate for the win and would almost do anything for it. In that respect, Kuroko no Basket perfectly reflects what it feels like to be in a competitive environment. The games are so over the top that most of the shots they take will have you going, you might think that the over-exaggeration of the matches would take you out of the watching experience, but in fact it is the exact opposite. It's because the show is so overzealous, it makes all the games they play that much more engaging. For instance, if you compare it to actual basketball, if one of the imposing teams has a score deficit of more than 30, regardless of the time of the clock, it's fairly obvious who the winner is before the match ends. In that aspect, basketball games can become fairly predictable since it's very hard to make that big of a comeback. However, in Kuroko no Basket, you're left guessing throughout the entire match of which opposing team is going to win. Even when you think there's too much of a score difference, the matches always happen to close in the further you watch. And the great thing is, the main characters of the story don't always win, making it almost impossible to predict the outcome up until the final seconds. It keeps every match interesting, and above all else, exhilarating. You get so immersed in the show that by the end of some games, you'll end up feeling exhausted and sweating in your chair due to the sheer ferocity. And the intensity is further pushed by each of the members' motivation of playing the game. The characters all have different core philosophies as to why they play basketball and how they want to play it, whether it be Kuroko trying his hardest and wanting basketball to be a team game, Kagami wanting to be the very best, Aumine not wanting to rely on his teammates, or Murasaka Gibara just playing since he's inherently talented at the sport. Watching all the different ideologies clash together in the court just makes it that much more appealing and essentially sets it so the person who wins has a stronger motivation. Whether you believe that having fun and trying your hardest is the most important aspect of playing, or being naturally talented means beating hardworking players, you can't deny that Kuroko no Basket captured these motifs and blends them all together. Because of the over-the-top nature of this series, every member has their own unique superpower that no one else can do, and while initially it may sound stupid, it provides more complexity and mind games within the matches. Kuroko being unparalleled in which he uses misdirection to distract opponents to give excellent passes, Kagami with his insanely high jumps and dunking ability, Midorima with his precise trajectory to sink three-pointers from anywhere on the court, and Aomine doing what he does best shooting impossible shots. Nonetheless, without these over-the-top extravagant shots, it wouldn't feel like the Kuroko we all know and love. I guess the best way to describe Kuroko no Basket is like watching a hyped commentary over a competitive game between top players. I mean, can you imagine if this series was being watched with professional commentators? But he's used to this, being a player from the East Coast. Oh, two dares! Three, three, four! Ah! Oh my god! He tries to wait, wait that off the platform and bear him or something. Okay, I'm done. It's over. I'm done. I'm done. I'm dropping a mic. Peace out, everybody. Oh, oh God! Respect. Oh, God! Just respect, everybody. I can't believe what I'm now seeing. Of course, despite all the bombastic elements that Kuroko no Basket has, some people might still not enjoy it, and that's completely fine. But if your personal gripes comes from the series not being realistic enough, then you've completely missed the point. Kuroko no Basket isn't a show about conveying the technical and realistic skill of playing basketball, but rather it's a show about passion and excitement. You don't watch it for how well written it is, you watch it for how static it makes you feel. The only big complaints I've heard about the series is that people say Kuroko isn't realistic enough, and you know what, I don't think anyone has actually calculated the forces themselves. So with the help of Dr. Nya, even though I'm an engineer, let's calculate the force and velocities of the basketballs and see if they're actually within human capabilities. 
Of course, I'm going to neglect the really obvious impossible shots, so let's go something that seems possible, such as Kuroko's Ignite Past Kai from episode 14 of season 2. In this scene, Kuroko attempts his Ignite Past Kai only to have it stopped single handedly by Aomine. So, what we want to find out is the force that Kuroko uses on the basketball, the force needed to stop the basketball by Aomine, and the speed of the basketball itself. Before we can even calculate any of the forces, we need the speed of the basketball, and to do that, we have to get acceleration. The formula to get acceleration is s equals ut plus half at squared, where s equals the horizontal displacement, u is the initial velocity, t is time, and a is the acceleration which we want. To get the displacement, we need to see where Kuroko and Aomine are standing respectively. As you can see here, Kuroko is standing approximately halfway between the hoop and the three-pointer line. Due to the slanted camera angle, we can't really measure the exact spot he's standing, although we get another shot showing that he's fairly close to the border of the restricted area around the hoop. Now we need to get this distance here. How do we do that? Kuroko shoe size. If we go to the Kuroko no Basket Wikia, his shoe size is not listed, however, we can get it from his height. Here's a list of the average shoe sizes of men between the heights of 165cm and 139cm that studies have shown. Since Kuroko is listed to be 168cm, we can average his shoe size to be 8, which is 25.7cm. Aligning Kuroko's shoes in a tangential fashion, we can observe that he is approximately 3.5 shoes, or 0.9m away from the edge of the restricted area, meaning he is 2.6m from from the edge of the court. Aumine is standing on the circumference of the center circle with an almost 90 degree angle. We note that the center circle has a radius of 1.8 meters. Half the length of the court is 14 meters, so minusing the radius means Aumine is standing 12.2 meters away from the edge of the court. Taking the difference between Kuroko and Aumine, we get a displacement of 9.6 meters. Now, time is a tricky one to get since there is no definitive scale we can measure from. However, in this scene, I'm going to assume that Kuroko hits the ball all in real time and going to neglect Aumine's inner monologue. Now, for those of you who don't know, a typical TV anime series runs at 24 frames a second. To find the time that basketball takes to travel from Kuroko to Aumine, I'm going to count the total number of frames and then divide by 24. Totaling the number of frames in which the scene happens, I count 75 frames, meaning it happens in approximately 3.13 seconds. So, from our equation, we can get 9.6 equals the initial velocity, which is 0, times time, plus half acceleration times time squared. Solving for A, we find acceleration to be 1.96 meters per second. Using this equation to find velocity of the ball, v squared equals u squared plus 2as, the velocity is 6.13 meters per second, or 13.72 miles per hour for you Americans out there, which is rather an average speed for a basketball to be thrown at, actually. But what about the force? In order to get the force that Aumini needs to stop the basketball, we need to calculate how much drag there is on the ball. The formula for drag is force equals half the density of air times the velocity squared times the diameter times the area times the drag coefficient. Density of steel air is measured to be 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. We know velocity to be 6.13 meters a second, and the average diameter of a basketball is 24.26 centimeters, and the area it covers is 0.044 meters squared. Now, to correctly find the drag coefficient, we need the Reynolds number. If you don't know what that is, well, get educated or something. Anyway, the formula to get Reynolds number is Reynolds number equals density of air times the velocity times the diameter divided by the viscosity of air. Solving this, Reynolds number turns out to be 91,868, which means turbulent flow. Cross-referencing the number with this chart here, we can estimate the drag to be about 0.4. However, a basketball is not a smooth sphere, meaning it has slightly more drag, bringing our drag coefficient estimate to be 0.5. Solving for the drag force, it comes to 0.12 newtons. Finally, solving for the forces, the equilibrium equation is force Kuroko exerts on the ball equals the force Naomine needs to stop the ball minus the drag force. The typical mass of a basketball is this number here, therefore applying Newton's law of motion, F equals ma, the force that Kuroko exerts on the basketball is 1.17 newtons, meaning Aumine exerts 1.29 newtons, which really isn't that superhuman at all. In fact, it's a very small force, about the same as getting hit by a fast-paced tennis ball. So, does this mean that Kuroko's ignite pass is possible? Ah, uh, if only it were that simple. You see, gravity seems to be non-existent for when Kuroko passes the ball. For the time it took for the ball to travel to Aumine, the ball would have already hit the ground within the first second. So while yes, the forces are most definitely within human capabilities, unfortunately, Kuroko does not abide by the laws of physics. Also entropy. I guess Kuroko no basket isn't realistic after all. Who would have known? 
but you should still watch the show because it's pretty great. In any case, I hope everyone took something away from this video, either having an incentive to check out Kuroko or realizing how clueless they are in physics. Get educated, maybe next time you'll understand. Well, that was an unusual video. Anyway, thank you guys for 10k subs even though I barely upload. I would have made a special video, but I was in the middle of exams and had literally no time. When I started making videos, I really didn't expect to reach 10k, but lo and behold, we're actually here, so really, thank you. I'll try to upload more since I am on mid-semester holidays, but no promises though. I really don't like to advertise my own stuff, but uh, you can follow me on Twitter if you want to see what I look like or just shit posting in general. See you in another 3 months and uh, yeah. I got nothing.